Oops, there's my one minute warning. I just have time for a few more jokes. You want to hear them? How long does a Russian need to reach a blood alcohol level of 0.8? I don't know! About two days of no drinking. <laughs> I was sitting in a bar one day and two large women came in talking in an interesting accent. So I said, cool accent. Are you two babes from Scotland? No. One of them snarled, it's Wales, you fool. So I corrected myself and I said, all right. So are you two Wales from Scotland? <laughs> then they kicked my ass. 20 years ago, we had Johnny Cash, Bob Hope, and Steve Jobs. Now we have no cash, no hope, and no jobs. Please, don't let Kevin Bacon die. <laughs> How do you seduce a fat chick? Piece of cake. How did Captain Hook die? He got distracted and wiped his butt with the wrong hand. You sneak into my room unnoticed. You gently touch one bit of my naked body after another until you find the most desirable place. Then you start sucking. Damn mosquitoes. <laughs> my time is up. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. How did I do? The crowd liked you. Can I come back again next week for amateur night? Nope, you have to wait till next month. Next month? Why? That's not fair. Sorry, them's the rules. Ah, crap. I love doing stand-up comedy. Why do I have to wait a whole month in order for me to perform again? I'll show that stage manager. I'm gonna perform next week, and he won't even know it. <laughs> Hello. 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 Welcome, everybody, to part three of this 1932 Mystery Cathedral Radio. I was just taking a look at the chassis here. What I want to do today is I want to pull out the uh, tuning cap and stick it in a dishwasher and clean that up. I'm going to take this off. This is all warped and stuff. I wonder if there's a, a way to uh, fix that. We'll take a look at it closer when I get it off. Look how this tube here is right next to this one. Wow! And when you look at here, look at all that room they had there. Oh, brother. That's crazy. It's kind of unusual, huh? Okay, f*** it. What's next? And as far as this, this can here, I've been debating whether I should take that out and clean out that tar in there. And, you know, I think I will. It has been running out, probably ran out when it started shorting out. But I don't think I want that on there. I might as well clean it up. I want this to look the best it ever has, even when it was new. I want it to look better than new. You gotta do better than that. So I'll probably be taking that out. Maybe we'll do that uh, in this episode. Here's a shot of how, how warped that thing is. You once called me a warped, <laughs> frustrated old man. Funny, huh? Yeah? Here's the front of the cabinet where I glued these two pieces together. Let's just take the clamps off and take a look at it. Huh? Yeah, better get the platinum on this thing fixed. That's the biggest thing I can do. There we go. Ain't you gonna finish it? I want to take all this out and glue a whole new veneer on here. And then what I'm going to try to do in this episode, I'm going to see if I can recreate these little uh, decorative grill here. I'm going to see if I can sketch that out and maybe cut it out on uh, some wood. It's not quite flat here because in order to join these two pieces here, I kind of have to bend it in. But I'll get it. Uh, I'll get it flat. I'm just going to work on uh, this portion of the, uh, the veneer that flaked off here. See if I can get this whole piece out. Hmm. 
You see this mark here where the water was soaked in on it? That's a water mark. You have no respect for other people's things. Now things are beginning to make a little sense. Hey, that worked pretty good. Mister, you better find yourself another line of work. This is really spongy here. See that wobble? Mm-hmm. Wood's probably been in such a damp place so many times that it just kind of got soft. But a new veneer glued onto here should help. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to make an outline of here and use that outline sort of a template so I can fill in these little uh, grill things here. What do you call those things? Decorative grill. All right, here's the first picture. Now, if you look at that, you'll see the escutcheon says Freshman Products. Now, what I did was I looked at that escutcheon outline very closely and took a look at my cabinet and this is what the escutcheon should look like. Now whether mine says Freshman Products on it, uh, who knows, probably not. But that's the exact type of uh, escutcheon I need. Anybody out there have one, I'll pay you good money for it. The next picture shows the four tubes in there. These tubes are the globe type. So remember I was pointing out how that uh, 47 tube was so big that it was almost touching the other one? So maybe this was designed for these older type globe tubes. Anyway, if you look at the, the tube all the way to the right, you don't see the can that I have on mine. You see the uh, antenna coil in front of it, but I don't see a can there. Let's take a look at the next picture. There's the side of it, uh, pretty much mine. Here's the picture I showed earlier of the grill. And there's the plate there. It says made in the USA, BRC Chicago. That means Belmont Radio Company in Chicago. But those are the only pictures I could find of this radio. But I consider myself lucky to have found those. Okay, let's, let's see what we can do here. Draw your picture? Spell it out! Alright. Alright, this is the only picture I have of this grill here. And it's not a straight on shot, so I just can't line it up there and trace it. But I do have where these things are located. All I need is to draw a line from here to here and here to here. I'll have that one set from here to here, here to here, and then a couple more. And I'll have to imagine where exactly I'm going to put this. But and this comes down here where this is. So let me work on that off camera, and uh, I'll show you my progress. I'm no artist, that's for sure. Now here's what I got. So let's see what this looks like when I put it in here and line it up. Oh, I need to cut that out. Okay, I've cut it out just to give you an idea what it will look like. Oh dear! Oh dear! Not too bad for an amateur, huh? And you think you can handle it alone? All right, but I hope we aren't making a mistake. Let's see what we can see here. It says General Instrument Corporation, New York, New York. 
And this dial says General 2. Hmm. Very interesting. Looks like there's a sheet of mica here. And one over here. I'll have to take those out before I put it in the dishwasher. But I think it's going to clean up pretty good. What I have done is I've taken this template, I traced it onto this board here, and I already started to cut out some of this here. Now this is a test board. This is a quarter inch. This is actually too thick. I want something like 3 sixteenths. I've got some coming, but we'll just use this as a test to see how this, uh, this actually looks. You can clearly see the mica sheets there. Yes. I have to put these in a safe place. Yes. I'm gonna give you a bath tuning capacitor. You gonna like that? No, no, please don't do it. Well, I'm going to do the rest off camera and I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to attempt to clean this. I've already tested it here and it's not washing away. And I've got some Dawn dishwashing liquid. Clean it. I didn't notice any ink coming off. Don't do it! I'm warning you, do not do it! As you can see, it's not coming off. So I think I'm safe to just clean the whole, whole thing. There's a bunch of dirt coming off it. You've got the brain of a four-year-old boy, and I bet he was glad to get rid of it. This here was scratched off. I'm not taking that off. If you see that line there, that was already like that. There's a scratch all the way around here. I'm trying to get this. Oh, it came off. Look, there was a dead bug on there. As cheap as this radio is, they did a good job on the dial. Your head is as empty as a eunuch's underpants. Wouldn't it be funny if all of a sudden it came off? <laughs> Fear not. I tested it thoroughly. Is it possible for you to shut the fuck up for 10 seconds? Okay, here's uh, what it will look like. This is just uh, the test one, remember? Oh, brother! I've got these much too thick. They should be thin, thin out a little bit. And uh, what I ordered was, I ordered some wood that's 3 sixteenths. This is a quarter inch. You see how that sticks out here? If I get the same size wood as this, once I get those in there, this will be level. Then I can take a whole piece of veneer and put that down and glue it, and that'll strengthen this. It don't look too bad. It's getting there. Yeah, I'm going to send you to an optimist and have your eyes examined. Well, there it is out of the dishwasher. And it's still hot. I got to clean up this rust here. But uh, this part looks pretty good. A lot smoother now. Oh, very smooth. More rust there. Maybe I'll put this in evapor rust overnight and see what happens. You know, I think I'm on to something. I've been playing around with the heat gun. Oh, you nasty man. I think I've got it. The more you run over a dead cat, the flatter it gets. <laughs> that looks pretty damn good. 
If I do stay somewhere, so let's take a few more treatments, but uh, heat's gonna work on it. Well, there it is after 24 hours in evapo rust. Now, this is the side that was pretty rusty, as you can see. The evapo rust did its job, but one of the unfortunate jobs that evapo rust also does is turn uh, steel into uh, a yellow haze. <laughs> so we're going to have to clean that up, but the rust is gone. The tuning mechanism itself, the blades here, they're beautiful. Hubba hubba. I love you. I want you. I love you, baby. Now you're looking at this about an hour and a half later, and I didn't like the way it looked. It had that uh, green kind of film on it, and a lot of that was already on there. And the vapor rust put some of that on there, but I wasn't happy with it. So what I did was I took some the navel jelly, mixed it into a, a cup with some water, so it's not so thick. And I just went to town on this. And I'm using all these brushes. Going into nooks and crannies. Just uh, put, putting that navel jelly on there. Going all across it. Then coming back to certain areas. And, and uh, kept doing that. I made like three or four passes on it. And uh, this, is, this is what it looks like there. I uh, used uh, Novus Number 2 to polish it up a little bit. How does it look? Oh, it looks fine. That looks pretty good, Barney. That is one fine looking tuning cap. Here are some words of wisdom from Mr. Know-It-All. And if there's any young people out there, here's a little advice from old Buzz. If you want to succeed, there's nothing like good old hard work. And I mean hard work. Hard! Want to succeed in life? You work hard and people will notice. Do we really pay for these lectures? That's what you have to do when uh, you, you're doing radios, too. This was in terrible shape. Now look at it. Don't you lecture me, you son of a bitch. Hard work, elbow grease. We'll do it every time. Why don't you just shut up? So here we are on the chassis again. Come on in. This is really dirty here. This whole thing needs to be clean. Yeah. But I think I'll take this uh, this can out and we'll take a look at it. I have loosened the screws. Let's take it out. Whoa! It says solar there. You see that? Looks like there's some tabs there that we can bend out. dog hair well, there it is cut in half it's sort of lightweight but very solid I don't know what they uh, made this with besides the paper and the uh, the foil baked capacitor and there's no additional tar in here what's in there some writing on here it says you cursed fool whoever finds this shall die at midnight <coughs> holy crap <coughs> 
Bye. 